Hail, gozaimasu, YouTube. That is Japanese for good morning because it is, in fact, Thursday morning here in Japan. We are in Japan, and I just wanted to make a video and let you guys know that we did make it safe and sound, and the ferrets made it. Um, we picked them up from the airport yesterday. It was a huge pain in the butt, but they're here, and well, they're not here, here. They're staying at one of Justin's co-workers' houses because uh, the military doesn't like ferrets, and that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, it's been a crazy last couple of days, lots of traveling. Um, this is our first day that we've actually had in Japan that we don't have anything to do because it's Thanksgiving, so everybody's off work. And all the offices are closed and stuff. So, uh, this is the first day we've actually had to kind of take a deep breath and step back and like, oh, okay, we're here. But, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about shipping ferrets in particular to Japan because the military carries a lot of species-specific legislation against ferrets, and they have, like, a huge problem with them. It's almost discriminatory. It's really disgusting. Um, but I went through the experience successfully, so I wanted to give you guys, all my ferret parents out there, a few tips for when you want to ship your ferrets to another country. Um, first of all, the number one tip that I could possibly give anyone um, when it comes to shipping any pet, much less ferrets, um, is have copies of every single piece of paperwork you receive from your shipping company. Copies of, you know, airline vouchers, copies of health certificates, copies of rabies certificates. Just make at least six copies of everything because... You know, paperwork will get shuffled around, sometimes it'll get lost. I know you need at least three copies of each piece of paperwork to be included with the carrier when the ferrets travel. So take those, put those with the carrier, and then make an extra like three or four copies for yourself. Because sometimes when you go to these customs offices and quarantine offices, they're going to want to see all kinds of paperwork, and they're going to want to take copies of that paperwork to keep for their files. So just make sure you have it and make sure you have all of the paperwork you need. You know, there's no such thing as too much paperwork. Like anything you think could possibly be useful, bring it. Because if you don't have every single piece of paperwork they're looking for, they will not let your animal come into the country. So just have too much paper. Have all of the paper. Um, the second tip... Uh, particularly if you're going to a country that speaks another language. Have either familiarize yourself with the language and become conversationally fluent in it if you have time, or find someone in country who is fluent in both their language and yours. Because one of the problems we ran into a lot was a language barrier. So we were trying to tell people what we needed to do um, while we were looking for where to pick up our ferrets at the airport, but people who we thought would know English pretty well didn't. So we had to, uh, we were so lucky that one of Justin's coworkers um, drove us there and he knew conversational Japanese a little bit. So he was able to kind of help us along and Google translate will be your best friend when everything else fails. Just pull it out. It may not be the appropriate syntax, but the other person will get what you're trying to say. So yeah, find some kind of means of communicating with the native population. Um, three, familiarize yourself with the laws and policies regarding your animal in that country. Um, way, way, way far in advance. Some, I know some countries in the European Union require that the ferrets, you know, or any other animal get microchipped first and then get their rabies vaccine like 30 days later. Um, but within 30 days, like it's crazy. Some of these laws are absolutely asinine, especially when it comes to ferrets. It's almost like they're trying not to bring ferrets into their country. So they make everything super complicated. And sometimes, especially in the case of ferrets and other, you know, I wouldn't call them exotic animals, but other unique animals, um, a lot of the time, the customs officers aren't familiar with the policies regarding those particular animals because they don't see them that much. So what you want to do is familiarize yourself, do some research, and you know become familiar with the policies regarding your pet because some of them won't know and they'll try to pull something over on you that's not what is within the law. That didn't happen to me, luckily, but 
you know, I was scared that it would happen, so I did do my research. Um, if you're traveling with ferrets to Japan in particular, you can go to the website for the Japanese Ministry of Health and Wellness, and that has all of the information about pet safety and what the pets need to have when they come to Japan, import, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, do your research. <laughs> and finally... Uh, my last big, big tip when it comes to shipping pets to Japan is to have a backup plan for everything. Have a plan B the entire time because sometimes you learn that your um, hotel has pet-friendly rooms, but they only consider dogs and cats actual pets, so they don't let ferrets stay in pet-friendly hotel rooms um, on base which sucks. So <laughs> formulate a backup plan for every original thing you do and have, you know, basically an oh shit backup plan. If everything gets derailed and for some reason your ferrets can't come with you right away or your dog or cat can't come with you right away, have a plan, have someone in place that can watch them because otherwise your pets might end up in a random Japanese kennel somewhere or end up in some place where they could get abused or neglected neglected or end up getting lost at the airport or worse turned away um so just think of the worst case scenario and have a backup plan you will be so glad you did it will relieve so much stress because you'll feel like okay no matter what happens there's a plan in place um that's about all i can think of right now um Originally, I was going to make a video about the whole process from start to finish, but the Japanese government is kind of weird about filming in certain places, and the last thing I want to do is make an enemy out of the Japanese government right now. But I just wanted to let you guys know that my ferrets are safe and sound. Um, they're staying on pet-friendly housing with a co-worker of Justin's, and we will be getting them as soon as we get our housing, because as you can see right now, we're living in a hotel room, and we could be living in a hotel room for up to three months. So, um, depending on when the housing people get their stuff together and get us our house. So, I just wanted to let you guys know that and wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving from the Far East, and I will see you guys later. Bye!